hey well what do you know I'm about to make another video why not why not I mean here we go they're gonna stone us anyway right okay so this is going to be the video that you guys some of you probably you seen it maybe uh, I think it was about two hours long is when I finally was knowledgeable I finally came to the revelation I finally came to the understanding that women can operate in the spirit of God to the same capacity of a man and that women do not have to be quiet in the church uh I'm going to give you a little breakdown of how I found this out. I was taken up for church in the wilderness one day. And um, hopefully she repents because she taught that women can't do stuff. And she never I don't think she ever corrected it. So hopefully she repents from that as well. And, but anyway, I was I was um, taken up for her against Jeremiah Rose because um Jeremiah Rose um, told a brother of mine, and I saw it because my brother showed me um, a screenshot, that women on YouTube should only prophesy or talk to other women on YouTube. They're not to make videos like for everybody and stuff like that. You know, um, and there was another time where me and him had a discussion uh, when we were discussing head coverings and stuff like that and um, he told a lady to be quiet because she was siding with me and he told her to be quiet because she's not permitted to speak um, using uh, 1 Corinthians 34 and 35 at that time frame I agreed with him um if you are still looking at my video, sister, God bless you. Um, you have my back. Um, I didn't jump on her, just to let y'all know. If you're looking at my finger and it looked funny, I burned my fingers. That's what happens when you burn your finger. Ugh. But anyway. So yeah, I um You know, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't attack her. I never was harsh to women. Um, ever. Like in the gospel and stuff like that. I have made videos i have said you know what i take that back i have said some things you know on facebook here and there but 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 you know i was never convinced that i can just you know say some wild stuff out my mouth like uh i mean i said some stuff some wild stuff out my mouth don't get me wrong but i just couldn't feel i never felt where i could be confident in the faith to tell a woman that she can't talk in the church even though i know what it says I just, I mean, because, you know, if I don't know, then I shouldn't be saying that. And I didn't really, I just, because like, ah, we know that that doesn't fit the character of God. I'm not going to hold you up, though. I'm going to try to share as best as I can, as quick as I can. Um, so this is going to be a, a, a breakdown of how um, men of God are wrong. I would love for somebody to uh, connect me to Geno Jennings. I want to go to his church. Somebody, I don't know, maybe somebody has better ties than I do me. I don't have those ties. I sent him an email because um, I know he accepts challenges, um, but he never responded. Um, I gave him my email. I gave him my phone number. Gino Jennings, you're very popular and you've gr you're growing very popular and maybe I'm just a peon. I would love to be a champ peon, but anyway, um, so it says right here in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Now, I'm one of them little knucklehead youngers, man, you know what I'm saying, don't nobody pay me no mind, man. I ain't got nothing going on, man. But guess what, though? I know Yeshua. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. 
Now check this out. 1 Corinthians 14, you look at 1 all the way to, I'd say, 20, 25. 1 to 25 is dealing with prophecy, it's dealing with speaking in tongues, it's dealing with how, uh, you know, it's better to prophesy than to speak in tongues without the interpretation, and Okay trying to bring order okay trying to bring order unto edification for the rest of the body of christ i made a video a while back you guys can type in my name and speaking in tongues and i will show you i think i made a video it's a q and a video about speaking in tongues and can we really speak in tongues you know with the saints or do we have to just be quiet or okay well the answer to that is in verse 23 um yeah and so you know that's the answer um for the unlearned and the unbeliever you know we're trying to be mindful of them not scare them away have them thinking that we're barbarians things of that nature but as far as opposed from that like if you're not unlearned and if you're not an unbeliever calm yourself down keep praying i mean it's all good paul is just trying to bring order there was a lot of disorder same thing from 26 all the way to 33. He's talking about the prophets when they prophesy. Do it in turn. Stop over talking each other. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. If you want to bring a hymn, bring a hymn. If you want to bring revelation, bring it. If you want to bring a psalm, bring a psalm. Sing a song. Sing a song. But do it in turn. Dan it. Okay. Dan dan it. Do it in turn. Let all things be done unto edifying. Okay. So that's talking about prophets. That's talking about prophetess without saying prophetess. You should already know it's talking about prophetess without having to say prophetess. It's talking about prophetess. Can a woman speak? Can prophetess speak? Come on, man. Stop being naive. Okay. Excuse me, not naive. Stop being immature. How about that? All right, so let's read 34. Because 34 all the way to 35, really. And then the clarity comes with 36 and 39. 36 through 39 where he's just summing it all up like, listen, man. But as far as 34 and 35... He's speaking primarily to women of God who are married. So can a woman speak in the congregation? Yes, of course she can. Of course she can. What do you think Aquila and Priscilla were doing with Apollos? Okay? What do you think they were doing? You think that uh, he was tuning her out only to listen to the husband? I mean, come on, get over yourself. I mentioned this in the other video. I'm mentioning it again because this video is not going to be long at all. But, I mean, really, are you really that bitter towards women leaders that you cannot listen to the wife, Aquila? Okay, which, well, I don't know which one was the guy. They both sound feminine. The names are very feminine sounding. You won't hear a man named Aquila or Priscilla. Um, okay, well, Priscilla, I, I'll say Priscilla is the female. It better be Priscilla. Okay, so Aquila. You know what I mean? You won't you won't hear you won't hear um put it like this. You won't Apollos wasn't tuning nobody out, okay? Or was it Alexander? He wasn't tuning nobody out. That's that's my point, okay? Anyway, uh was that his name? I hate not being my mind be all over. Y'all know me, man. Just love me. Just hug me. All right, hold up. Yeah, no. Uh, how far down the line must I go? Must it I go? Excuse me. Correction. All right. Anyway, moving on. I ain't about to find it, but y'all understand. Those who know the word, understand. Those who don't know the word, 
do not understand. And unfortunately, I have to keep going further. But the bottom line is, oh, okay, I, 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 I do it. Oh, okay, man, I didn't mean to go this long. Eh, Quilla and Priscilla. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is this. What I'm trying to say is they were teaching him. They brought forth teaching. He received it, whatever his name is. If it's Apollos. Okay. Verse chapter 18. It's funny because I believe the Lord was telling me that anyway. So let's go there real quick. Uh... His name is Alex Apollos. Yeah. Okay, so I was right the whole time. Jonathan, calm yourself down. Anyway. So uh are you are you trying to tell me that, you know, he was tuning her out, Priscilla? No, he wasn't tuning her out. He wasn't tuning her out. He ain't doing all that. So now Okay, so where do we go now? Where do we go? Where do we go? Where was I? I was somewhere before I was talking about Aquila and Priscilla. I wish this was live. I might have to try and try to do that one day. Do it live. People could help me along the way. I'd be needing help, man. But anyway, um, where was I? I was at a... Um, so... Okay. Can a woman speak in the church? All right. He says, as saith the law. Right? Right? 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. They are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Quick challenge. This is how you can shut a Geno Jennings down. This is how you can shut uh, Jeremiah Rose down, uh, one of them Hebrew Israelite kind of people down. You know, like the guys who like walk around acting like they have thorns stuck up their butt or something. I don't know. But anyway, this is how you can shut them down. All you got to do is say this. Show me in the law, because he said the law, right? He says... They are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. It says, let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Okay. Where in the whole five books, Genesis, Exodus, uh, what is it? Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You're not going to find nowhere where it's saying that a woman of God must obey a man of God. And that's what they're teaching, just to let you know. That's what they're teaching. They're teaching that a woman of God must obey a man of God. And they don't even know that they're teaching that. They don't even realize that they're teaching that. People don't even realize that that's what they're saying. Otherwise, it's a husband and a wife, like I'm saying. And it's the truth. Because the Holy Spirit told me. Don't take it personal. So, that's what it is. A husband and a wife. Why? Because in that law, it says it in Genesis 3.16. That Adam was to rule over Eve. Okay? Okay, so who is she being subjected to? Adam. Okay? Not Cain. Not Abel. Not Methuselah. Okay? Nobody. Okay? But Adam, her husband. All right, past that. And it's and it's like, you know what? That just ends it. Just like how you can end that whole marriage doctrine with, listen, shut up. It doesn't mean that. Ezekiel 16. What is it? <laughs> Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, I believe, uh, 16, 24, it talks about the wedlock being broken. You said it can't be broken. It's a, it talks about being stoned. Jesus spoke highly of being stoned. He rebuked the Pharisees for not stoning and taking bribes. 
So don't use that about him not doing the stone and stuff and not being with it. He was with it. He was born under the law of Moses. Jesus Christ never said that you cannot uh, marry a uh, divorce except for the cause of fornication during the betrothal stage. You will never find it. It's nowhere recorded in scripture. I don't care how many dreams you have. Oh, got to make a video about that. But anyway, you know what I mean? There's just things. There are certain things that can just shut down. Like I understand like it might be harder for people to understand the tribulation, uh, post-trip, pre-trip. Actually, I don't understand because he says immediately after. So it doesn't make sense. But however, people can still try to do whatever they want to do. It's false. It's not true. You're tripping. You're doing too much. When you feel like, when you start to realize that people are stretching stuff, it's not true. That's what I'm going to tell you. Always roll with that. If you feel like they're stretching and making it seem hard, like only a group of us have it, that's what Gnostics come from. There was always Gnostics in the body of Christ. They had this special anointing, this special group of people who had a special understanding, and it wasn't of God, okay? And, um, yeah, that's just that. Um, so, yeah. Oh. <sighs> I'm going to make more marriage videos, too, because I got more revelation about that. And none of it is, like, um, dangerous. None of it's harmful. None of it's contradicting scripture. It's only adding to the truth more and more and more and more. Hopefully, I, I could probably make that tonight, maybe. Let me squeeze this out. So, anyway, back to the discussion. Okay, so, boom. You're never going to find where it says that a woman has to obey a, a man. You're only going to see where Adam... Uh, where Eve has to obey Adam. That's it. You're not going to find it nowhere else. So we're done with that. We're done with that. These women were being disorderly. These wives were being disorderly. They were told to obey their husbands at home. Okay? This was talking about churches. What does it say? Churches. It says right here in verse 34, let your woman keep silence in the churches. These. This is an illustrated, this is an illustrated couple going to church and as they're in church she's being disorderly why do i know that she's being disorderly because they were being disorderly speaking in tongues they were being disorderly prophesying from 26 to 33 they're being disorderly speaking in tongues from first corinthians 14 1 all the way to 33 okay i mean to 25 first corinthians 14 1 to 25 he was talking about disorder with speaking in tongues and how to do it 26 to uh to 33 he's talking about prophets how they need to be you know subject of the spirit of the prophet the spirit of the prophet needs to be subject of the prophet rather and you know like you know and 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 ha practice some self control that's the what the focus is same thing with the women he's never getting off so topic like to the point where it's like, oh, this is a brand new discussion. No, it's not a brand new discussion. Okay, that applies to the prophetess too. Okay, in in, in twenty six and twenty and thirty thirty three. But it's just that now he's talking specifically to the wives. Why? Because he's talking about husbands. He's talking about uh, being object uh, obedient. Okay, no woman was told to be obedient to a man. It's only a husband. We're done with that. Okay. That's why he talks about husband and wife. Okay? The numbers are only for our finding. It says 34, 35, 36, 37. So we can find it. But he's just talking. He knew what he was talking about. You don't. We got to get on one accord. Just like how we got to get on one accord with the marriage doctrine. Which is, uh, <laughs> what? A few, a few, a number of, uh, seven chapters down from this. <laughs> where he says, you know, now, according to the things that you guys asked me about marriage. Y'all ain't asked them, so you don't even know what they asked them. You gotta you gotta discern what they asked them. They already knew what Jesus said. He was going deeper. So you can't create nothing. They already knew what Jesus said. So we're past what Jesus said. Now we're trying to figure out what they asked Paul. Alright? Now, now we're in 14. Okay, boom. So now we're going to first Corinthians, first Timothy. Turn with me to first Timothy. First Timotheus, chapter two, okay, boom, 11 through 15. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach 
nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Now let me tell you this. Everybody ain't a teacher. Okay? I've messed up, but I am a teacher. That's my calling. I've messed up. You guys just bear with me. Show patience. That's part of the fruit of the Spirit. Be patient with the old boy. But that's my calling. I'm a teacher. Everybody just ain't a teacher. Walk in your calling. Okay? If you feel like you're talking about this stuff and you really don't know, but you're talking about it, stop talking about it. There are very much topics in the Holy Scriptures that I did not talk about because I did not have the faith to talk about it. There are scriptures that I talked about because I thought that I had the faith to talk about it, but I really didn't. Trial and error. But overall, I was fully convinced. Be careful, because when you're not fully convinced, be real with yourself that you're not fully convinced. And don't talk about it. Just wait. Hold it. It's okay. You don't have to know everything. The Lord is the teacher. Apart from him, you can do nothing. So wait on him. If he ain't telling you, how would you really know? You know what I mean? The Lord pressed upon me because he helped me in defense for my sister, um, Church in the Wilderness. When um, when he was indirectly talking about, when Jeremiah Rose was talking about her on Facebook uh, a while back. You know what I'm saying? And I came, I came to her defense, you understand? And in me coming to her defense, God found that righteous. Because what does he even say in scripture? Defend those who cannot defend themselves. She didn't know this doctrine. She got videos coming against y'all ladies too. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully she took them down. But she didn't know this doctrine. You know what I'm saying? And really, to be honest with you, she owe y'all an apology. But you know what I mean? Hey, that's just whatever. People don't do that kind of stuff because because they want you to look at them as whatever. So I ain't going to go there. But you know what I'm saying? No one, no one thing about the old boy Joe Nathan. Okay? One thing about the old boy Joe Nathan is I'm going to correct myself publicly, okay? I am going to do that, especially if I sin publicly. When you sin publicly and you err publicly or you make a mistake publicly, you correct it publicly. You don't just delete the video and, you know, you know, keep on talking in the conversation. I hate when people do that. I hate when people know that they're debating you about something and they dispute you and they don't agree with you and then they realize that they were incorrect and then they be like, they want to talk about fish sandwiches and they want to talk about Moses and they want to talk about Deborah and they want to talk about Eliakim. No, we're not about to do all that. We're not about to talk about the high priest. Let's go back. You were wrong. We need to discuss this. This is how we reconcile because you was chewing me up. You was kind of getting a little frisky out the mouth. Let's, let's tackle that. Okay. We're not about to just start talking about Samuel Jackson. Okay, and uh, and uh, and you know, and and you know, and uh, and uh, and and people with last names like Witherspoon. No, you want to talk about everything on the in the in the ends of the earth, <laughs> but what you need to be talking about. I hate this stuff, man. It's a sign of immaturity, man. That's all it is. It's just you're immature and you're prideful. You're prideful. You don't want to admit that you were wrong. This is what you do. So okay, you do that. Okay. You always admit when you're wrong. Learn from my character, okay? I could be wrong sometimes. You could be wrong sometimes. It's okay. Don't worry if the subscribers leave. It's okay, okay? So, um, so what is he saying? Let's go to First Timothy. But I just want to say this, though. Yeah, you know what I mean? We have to be careful, you know what I'm saying? I didn't touch on that marriage doctrine for a long time. For a real long time. I only made one video about it. Okay. I'm just now making videos about it. So I don't have to delete no videos no more. But I'm just now making videos about it. But at first, I made one video. I had to delete it. I had to. Matter of fact, I made two videos. But in my second video, I was more right than I ever was. Because I knew that without the cause of fornication, was I was on to something. But anyway, now, I mean, the scripture is just too clear. It's just like... How you're not going to find certain things in the scripture. You're just not going to find it. <laughs> it's over. I mean, like, it's no more. That was doctrine of men. You will never find it. Thank God. Clap. Give God the praise. It's just the stuff you won't find. It's like you won't find the first lady. You're never going to. First lady, Michelle Obama. 
First Lady uh, Ivanka Trump or whatever her name is. You know what I'm saying? But but you ain't going to find First Lady in the Bible. No, you're just not going to find it. The pastor's wife is just her name. <laughs> whatever her name is, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let the woman learn in silence without subjection. But And that's what it's called, the learning the traditions of men. <laughs> All right. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Okay. To who? The husband. Right? Just like how the prophet must, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Well, the woman is subject to her husband. Okay? And that's spoken of. Oh, man. I had the chapter for it, too. It was in one of the epistles. I think it was Peter. The wife is subject to the husband. Let me... You know me, y'all. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Just bear with me, man. I ain't mean to this. I ain't mean to be this long. All right. Let me see. Hopefully, the wife is subject to her husband. Hopefully, it comes up, man. And you know, Bible Hub. You can't just do that in Bible Hub and treat it like it's Google. Bible Hub, like, nah. We don't know what you're talking about. The wife is subject to her husband. I'm not trying to smear this in, ladies, who just got in an argument with your carnal husband, maybe. All right? Ephesians 5.22. I'm just saying it because I'm trying to, you know. Anyway, moving on. Ephesians 5.22. But you're still subject to your husband, <laughs> whether he's carnal or not. You know what I'm I mean, I don't say that with joy, but I'm just saying, I feel for you. I feel for you. No, let me just stop. Let me stop. All right. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands. Listen to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. That's verse 24, Ephesians 5.5. 5. Okay, I was wrong. It wasn't Peter. Cool. So, the correlation. And I'm glad it wasn't Peter because it's not the same person anyway. But um, the correlation is uh, the same author who said this in 1 Timothy 2.11. Okay, cool. So, let the woman learn to stop silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. That's a married couple. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. That's a married couple. Need I say more? No. Notwithstanding... She shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. What? Childbearing? Why do you have a child? You better be married. We're not talking about fornicators. Okay? We're not talking about fornicating sisters of God. We're not talking about fornicating sisters in Christ. Okay? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about married woman. That's what we're talking about. Why do I know? Well, skip to verse uh, 12, chapter 3. He says, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Okay? He's talking about... Now, check this out. What he's talking about... Okay, so, boom. 1 Corinthians 14, 34, 35, what I briefly, briefly mentioned. That was a couple going to churches outside of the church and then they got to go home and learn from their husbands at home this is the opposite first corinthians first timothy rather two um and chapter three and all this but this is talking about a woman and a husband in their house church okay that's what this is talking about this is their house church, okay? This is their church, okay? I want you to understand that. Because if you read, it says, 
if a man desired the office of a bishop. Okay? And then he starts to talk about how he has to be given to hospitality. Okay? Because this is him in his house. It says, For if a man know not how to rule his own house, in verse 5, how shall he take care of the church of God? Who, by the way, I want to add, is assembled in his house. So you better take care of your house because we're going to have some, we're going to have Brother Charlie Brown come on tonight. We're going to have Brother Lionel. We're going to have Brother uh, Rusenthoff. Okay, we're going to have, and he's a Jew. You know what I'm saying? He, he, ain't, he ain't like Brother Leroy, but he's been, he's been, he grew up in the projects. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have them all tonight. Okay? They're going to eat our fried chicken, and I don't eat it. But I'm just saying, they're going to eat it. All right? So, with that being said, I want you to understand what you get involved in. You're getting involved in a situation where these are the qualifications for church leaders. But these church leaders are inside of the congregation of their own home. Okay? In their own home. When he's saying this in verse 11, that the woman needs to be subject, he's, he's thinking of the mind of someone in their own home. Okay? All right? And, 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 and not teaching their own husband. Okay? That's I told you, Adam and Eve. That's their own home. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Run it over your mind. Run it over your head. Okay? Let it stick. By the time you get to talking about bishops and deacons, it's in their own home too. I just read to you what chapter five say. I mean, verse uh, verse five said in chapter three, and I'm and I and I told you what uh, chapter twelve verse twelve said in chapter three as well. Let the deacons be the husbands. Of one wife, okay, ruling the children and their own houses well, okay. So, with that being said, do I believe that God can still um, use a woman of God who is married to the same capacity? Of a woman who's not married? Yes, I can. Look at Aquila and Priscilla. Okay? So I'm done. I don't really think that there's nothing else to say. Oh, what I can say is Romans Romans 16. So, Romans 16 1 says, I commend unto you Phoebe our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centria. Okay, so that word servant, you go to Bible Hub, type it up, or you go to, um, just type up Romans 16, verse 1, you know what I'm saying, go to, uh, go to interlinear, after you go to interlinear, go to the word, um, servant, tap that, and it's gonna say deacon, okay, now, is God a respecter of man? No. Is God a respecter of bishops and deacons? No. Is God a respecter of deacons and deaconess? No. Huh. I'm done. Peace. Got that video out the way.